yeah. We won't get in, we won't get into that we won't get into that Rome night that we had a couple of years ago. We we yeah, we are. It was ages ago, but, um, <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> Franco Franco Smith was uh yeah, he he was waiting for me this morning when I came in so I'm like, "Oh god. Oh, oh god." <laughs> He'll be getting you to do the washing machine for sure. Oh mate, we've done it. We've done it plenty of times. He loves terrible. that thing. He absolutely yeah. loves that thing, but no. Um Rome a couple of years ago. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure get... I'm sure you took your your kilt off at one stage. But I'm not, I'm not 100 <laughs> <laughs> all that you had all the Italian birds going nuts. <laughs> ah, that's that's a lie, surely. Yeah, that is a lie. Like, <laughs> no, I, mean... being too nice. I tell you what, there's an art cafe, by the way. That is yeah. uh, that is some that is some gaff over there. No, the it's a good cafe. spot. It's a good spot. Oh, we me and Dave Denton got left in there one night with the oh, wow. uh, with the bill that no one had paid, <laughs> and we thought we were getting free drink all night until they threw us the bill. Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah, Wait, I mean, hang on, Seb. Don't you know Dave Denton in a yeah, like we, family we, setting? Yeah, we grew up together, and he's my mum's uh, godson. Oh, there you are. the yeah. dentist. I yeah. must have known that at some point. Yeah. So um, there we go. We go back a long way. It was actually yeah, that was my first Six Nations, and we played against uh, Scotland and Rome, and yeah, you know, I got to grab Denton's jersey after the game, so it was pretty special. So you boys had a, you had a few a few after the game and then straight back on the Sunday. Yeah, straight back on the Sunday and then obviously with Benetton we got two big games coming up um, to try and keep our playoff hopes alive in the URC. So this week we got the Lions. I'm not sure if all of us will play, so we'll see tomorrow. Um, and then definitely next week because we got the Challenge Cup playoff. And if we win that, then we got a home quarter final. So yeah, lots to lots to play for. There was a few dusty carcasses in Glasgow this morning. All the all the Glasgow all the boys were back in. Everyone was told they had to come in to sort of be told oh, right. Yeah. This is it. And then some of them were sent away on holiday. But yeah, there's yeah. a few ropey ropey souls in there. Yeah, it's the same as us. It's the same as us. It's taken a lot. It's taken a lot out of us as it, as it always does. Talk us through what's probably a frustrating day on on Saturday for you. And yeah, you know, we were just talking about how bad the decision that Jaco Paper was to give uh, a red in the England match earlier versus Ireland, but mm. arguably even worse, the outcome uh, Angus Gardner's decision not to punish Scotland for being offside in the dying moments of that match. Yeah, it was it was frustrating because we so close to just getting over the line. Um, I tried to have a chat with Matthew Carley after the game, telling him, "Mate, were you sleeping on that side?" Because also. And that last play, um, I'm sure one or two of the Scotland boys are offside when we pick and go and it gets turned over. So, yeah, we just seem it's we never get the rub at the green, um, which is frustrating. But you know, if we if we have to look at ourselves, you know, we've pre we've left a lot of chances out there, and that's probably been the story of our Six Nations. We haven't quite executed the way we we wanted to in that final third. So. Yeah, obviously a lot, lot of disappoint, a lot of disappointment after the game. Um, it was the same against France. It was probably the same against Ireland at times. Uh, Wales, you know, I think against Wales we made eleven or twelve line breaks. Uh, we're not able to finish. So, yeah, very disappointed. But you know, I think we we went into the Six Nations wanting to get respect and credibility back. You know, from the outside world, and I think you know we're on to onto something pretty special. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you judged on your results and another disappointing Six Nations, but a lot of positives to take forward for sure. No, you've definitely done what you set out to do. Like everyone's back yeah. talking about it, Lee, playing, talking about the brand of rugby that you're playing. Did you, what, like I I even felt for you boys, see that, that try at the end because penalty at the end again from that scrum mm. and then everyone switches off a bit and they're like, oh, right, Scotland will just boot it out and they go the length. Yeah. That, you're a big Duan van der Merwe. You know, that's a that's a real killer blow because then there's nothing worse than after the game, you look at the scoreline and it doesn't really reflect yeah. what happened in the game. Like you said, there were so many opportunities you boys missed. Scotland the same, yeah. to be fair, but that must have been frustrating as well. Yeah, so frustrating. And the, the thing is, people who didn't, didn't watch the game, they see the scoreline and they think, oh, well, Italy have been, you know, put away again, away from home, pretty, pretty uh, standard, I guess. Yeah. But um, I think huge positive is that we're getting that respect and credibility back. 
you know, people are talking about us and, you know, the brand of rugby rather than, you know, why Italy and the Six Nations, I think that's a massive, a massive uh, feather in our cap. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, we, I think, yeah, we've let ourselves down a little bit at times. So, um, yeah, lots to improve on, but definitely a, a, a good mood in the camp heading into, a, you know, a big summer and, and, and to the World Cup. I know it's not all down to him, right? But, and Tommy Allen, Galbisi mm-hmm. played outstandingly, were brilliant. Mm-hmm. But if you have Weange on the pitch on Saturday. Yeah. No, listen, he's, yeah, he's world class. And, you know, we you always want those sort of players in your team that, you know, can change a game in the blink of an eye. And I think he's definitely one of those. Um, he looks, <laughs> he doesn't look it. He's like, no, he's, Genuine, like one of those guys who just plays FIFA and and just takes it takes it easy, walks around the hotel, t- tiny tiny bloke. But but once you get a once he gets a rugby ball in his hands, he can change a game very quickly. And yeah, world class as he's shown on so many different occasions. Someone told me, is he f- French? But his Italian is his Italian's not great, and I think like I I I might have had five or six good conversations with them throughout. Um, because his English isn't great, his Italian's not great. My Italian's terrible, so and I don't speak a word of French, so so it's pretty tough. But um, yeah, he's he's basically full full out French. That yeah, can obviously, yeah. So um, but no, a huge asset to us, and hopefully we can keep him fit for the World Cup because yeah, like I said, he's world class and he can change a game. And when you have those type of people in your team, you know anything can happen. What do you reckon's changed though? Like how what's galvanized you guys? I think Max, it's it's come from from the top. I think Kieran Crowley's been an awesome influence. Um, I think, you know, the way he manages us and the belief he's given us to just go out there and play, and um, I think that's filtered throughout the throughout the team. Um, and the environment in which he's created is is awesome. You know, you come in every day. It's it's a great place to be, and you know that's filtered through. But at the same time, you know, Italy have got a lot of young players that are coming through and, and top quality players, young young guys that are putting their hands up. And um, I think that helps, you know, and we, we, we're we starting to create a little bit of depth. Um, you know, in past, if you picked up one or two, you know, serious injuries, then, you know, you could get blown away. But, you know, young guys have stepped in and, and done well. So, yeah, I think I definitely think it's the best environment that I've been in. Um, I've I've obviously been in Italy set up for a number of years now, and yeah, for sure this is this is a really good place to be. And I think we're all buying into to what Kieran wants, um, and I think we're definitely on the right track for sure. Again, it also feeds off of the club rugby. You boys at Treviso have been going yeah. over the last few years, haven't you? And... Yeah, that, that's a massive help. That's a massive help too because you know there's only two franchises. Um, obviously, Zebra are, are struggling, but. You know, I think there's 18 or 19 of us in the Italy set up from Benetton. And, you know, we've had a really good year so far. Um, so, yeah, that form sort of carries in. You know, you look at the the young guys that have come through. Minancello, Lorenzo Canone at eight. You know, these guys have been performing really well for Benetton. And that form's been taken into the Six Nations. Um, and those guys have also put up put up their hands. So, um, yeah, I think that's definitely right that that form comes through, comes through the URC and, and the club stuff. Just need Zebra to pull their finger out now. Yeah, exactly. I need to get on the phone to CC and tell him to wake <laughs> up. But I think, you know, <laughs> I, I also think there's some good young players there. Um, and they just need to get that, you know, you know, get 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 it going there because that that'll help the the national team too. Yeah. Is there a sense of the countries behind you a bit more now? You know, you're not you're no longer sort of gallant losers you're not happy just competing you've shown what you're capable of you talked about the youth team who came third uh, in the under 26 nations but have been performing very well for the last couple of years mm-hmm. are they behind you now the people of italy noticing it more for sure 100 percent. I've, ne- I've never felt like especially during the six nations campaign the, the support that we've had back here you know you walk into treviso and fans are chuffed and the way we're playing the same in rome you know people are waiting for us at train stations and cheering us on so yeah, it's been a, a completely different experience to to any that I've um, had before, and um, I think that helps. You know, when you play a brand of rugby that we're playing, and we, you know, we're not just showing up and you know playing a boring style that maybe we stay in the game until 50, 60 minutes, and then we get battered. So, you know, we just I think we're just playing an attacking brand, and whatever happens, happens. As Kieran always says, just go out there, give it shits, and you know, whatever happens, happens. But 
you know, we, we want to be courageous. We talk about being uh, courageous all the time and, and throwing the ball around. And yeah, I think we're doing that. Just a quick one on your performances throughout the Six Nations. Uh, there's a lot of media saying that you could have perhaps won a couple of games with slightly better game management. Do, do you think at times you guys were guilty of overplaying? Because you seem to get the balance right for the Scotland game. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think so at times. Um, you know, it's probably something that we need to try and balance out, especially when we're exiting. Um, but our identity is that we want to play and, you know, we want to give it a crack. So, you know, you can't go into your shell too much because ultimately, you know, if you go into your shell, then you put yourself under more pressure. So, you know, I think if you if you go a bit too defensively, then we're falling back into sort of what we were doing before and, that obviously wasn't working when you were, when you know we are shipping fifty points a game. So um, yeah, I think we just got to keep believing and keep buying into it and just working on our execution um, because you know a lot of our a lot of our opportunities came from actually attacking in our own twenty two. Uh, Got BC uh, stepping into the sort of ten shirt beautifully. Isn't he a bit lippy on the pitch? Yeah, <laughs> I called him the c word when we played. I think it was Ireland because he told me to fold. I was like, shut up and let me do my role. Don't tell me what to do. Um, but no, nah, he's, he, mate, he's, to be fair, he's, he's class, eh? Um, yeah, he manages us really well. He's obviously young, but, you know, um, sort of got an experienced head on his shoulders. So man, I think he's, he's, he's awesome the way he communicates. And I think it helps having Tommy around to um, sort of bounce off each other, which is good. And, um, no, nah, yeah, I think Paolo's, Paolo's awesome. Um, I think it's been a little bit difficult for him this year because, you know, Montpellier has been playing a bit more at 12 and, you know, because of their injuries and things. So probably hasn't taken, you know, that form that he would have wanted maybe into the Six Nations. But, um, yeah, for sure, we've got a world-class 10 there. You would have seen that Georgia over the weekend won their 11th European Championship in 12 years. A lot of pressure. You would have been aware of them being given a shot in the in the main tournament. How do you think that issue is best sorted out? Listen, I think Georgia are a good side, and and I don't think it helped that we lost to them in the in the summer. Um, but you know, I think we're showcasing now that you know we we belong we belong in this tournament. We belong in the Six Nations. Um, also, from November, you know, we 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 um, comfortably beat Samoa, then we beat Australia. Um, we were so close so many on so many occasions this six nations so I thought I think we sort of squashing those sort of talks by the way we're performing and that's the only thing we can do because if you asked me this question two three years ago I probably would have said fair enough Georgia probably do deserve a shot um there should be maybe a playoff or whatever because ultimately you judged on your your performances and your results um but at the moment I think, you know, we show we show we showcasing why we deserve to be in the Six Nations. I think we're making it a really good spectacle, and you know, teams when they play against us have a bit more respect, as as Ryan touched on as well. And um, you know, they don't just see us as oh, we'll go to Rome and get an easy five points. I think uh, everyone has to fight for fight for that win now against us.